Idols Tank album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from Idols. They are a punk band out of Bristol, and over the last few years, these these boys have certainly blown up, haven't they? And at first, I'm gonna be honest, I was a little late to the dance. Brutalism came out. I had no idea who these guys were and everybody started raving about this thing and shortly after I understood why this is an absolutely electrifying album of pummeling riffs and angsty performances the hype is absolutely here and if the hype was you know definitely there to begin with it only grew for me with their follow-up album joy is an act of resistance one of my favorite punk albums of like the last decade this thing to me took everything that was so good and innovative about their debut album but cranked it up with some catchier hooks some fancier production and the energy on this thing this this to me just is the spirit of modern punk now i honestly around that time sat down and genuinely thought that i had you know found my next big punk obsession this is who i was going to be sticking with for the next few years however and and this is something that a lot of people are kind of shocked by I have been on a serious mild streak with Idols lately. The Ultra Mono record. I mean, tracks like Model Village and War are excellent, excellent tunes. But overall, this was the first time that I heard an Idols album and I just kind of shrugged at the thing. The production on this album... Oh, it is it is not good, and I am all for a gritty, sort of grimy, spit-in-your-face punk record that doesn't care how it sounds. This is just ugly, though, and if that was the case for Ultramano, let me, let me tell you, it goes triple uh, for their last album, Crawler. I honestly did not enjoy most of this album. I just thought it was just really not well done. Now, that being said... I know what idols can do. I know just how far they could push themselves. And most importantly, when they want to do something, guess what? They freaking do it. And leading up to this album, I thought that, you know, this was going to be the jolt of energy that I needed from idols to, you know, really propel them back up in my in my ratings. And the singles, like I said, are awesome leading up to this thing. And in a lot of ways, I am very much back on board. This album starts off with idea number one, and honestly, it's a pretty mesmerizing intro. Now, let's address that elephant in the room right off the bat. This album is very much so idols going art punk, which obviously can go a lot of different ways, a lot of different results here. And I did have reservations going into a track like this, but but bless them, they really did this great. The tension here, the build-up, the class of this track, it is all a build-up to this hook, which it always should should be and it's pretty explosive in its own sort of more subtle way. Also, Joe Talbot, uh, as a frontman on this album, is one of the best things about it. His performances are often super charismatic, really thrilling. Here, he is like the, just the perfect blend of really, really poignant, but also kind of mysterious. And it really is, you know, a weird track for Idols because it never really, you know, takes off as you would expect. It's sort of a whimsical start, but the band actually really nail it, and God, they set the scene for this album really well. It makes this album very much feel like something new and exciting, which we only see further on Gift Horse. You know, I, originally I liked this single, but in, you know, the scheme of the album, I freaking love this track. In a lot of ways, this is home for me. The production on this track is so in your face. It is really thrilling, and that's great because we get a big, bassy riff that could have gone a lot of different ways, but it sounds great. It's a really great track that just keeps pummeling and pummeling. By the end, this very bass-centric riff is really easy to get lost in. It's almost meditative. And Joe's performances continue to be fantastic. While not maybe as rowdy as some of his early performances, There, this track is like oozing with charisma. Great single, great sound, great track. Also really love Roy, the drama here, and the pacing. Once again, my hat is off. Especially with just the pounding drums and just this build-up to the hook. And this does seem like the meat and potatoes of what Idols has been doing over the last two albums, which I personally haven't enjoyed that much. But this, to me, is packaged the right way. I love just how thick and meaty the bass riff is. The guitar hook is, God, ripped directly out of the 60s for some weird reason. And Joe's performance, once again, is really charismatic. 
it's definitely off kilter and very experimental for the band. And if you are not into this, I do kind of get it. But for me, this is really something new and exciting. And I love when that riff just comes crashing in and things intensify just enough. Great, great sound. Just know that with this album and a lot of the better tracks here, you do have to sit with them a little, which is not something that I've come to expect from an album from Idols, but it's just something that you want to keep in your mind. However, Dancer, this one does not take its time, and this is a track that I never thought I'd be talking about, because together here, we have Idols and LCD sound system, which on paper sounded bizarre for five minutes, and then 30 seconds into the track, I instantly got it. And I love the looming bass riff and the vocal performances all around that just sound like chanting by the end of it. I mean, this hook is an absolute blast of one. It is one of the most timely hooks that Idols have put out in quite some time. I mean, I think this is the best track here. I think it's a hell of a single. And this track on its own excited me for this album more than anything. Now, I will say this. While a bulk of this album really does get me back in Idol's good graces, there's also a lot of tracks on here that kind of bring back bad memories, like Pop, 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 for example. This, to me, sums up everything that I didn't like about Ultra Mono and Crawler, this slow, plodding, off-kilter track that doesn't seem to know what it's doing. It's not even performed... Uh, it's really not even performed well overall, and I think it's probably the worst track here. Not only that, but it's the longest track here, and Joe on this track, Joe Talbot, my god, he sounds like he's gonna fall asleep. Like, you know, I'm okay with like a shifting, artsy punk record that takes a lot of risks, but then I hear a track like this, and genuinely it takes me out of the groove. Like, don't get me wrong, I think like a more art punk based sound actually works really well for the band. It is a great strategic move. But then I hear tracks like A Gospel and I want to take it all back. This is so dull. While the artsier direction of this album is one of its best things going on for it, honestly, when they get too artsy and too experimental, it leads to this album's worst moments. I get what they were trying to do with this track, A Gospel, but this is far from a big wow moment. It's just boring and it doesn't really progress at all. A more artsy, you know, approach is one thing, but this is just boring. And Monolith has a finale. I mean, it certainly gets its title and it has the right title because it is monolithic of a track. It's mostly just Joe and some synths as well. And it's a fairly reserved performance. You really do have to sit with it. It almost comes off as like a meditation from him. I just wish it went a little bit further and actually had a payoff because it's a little underwhelming as a finale. Outside of that, though, while this album is a pretty big departure for the band, I don't think that they've, you know, sounded this poignant in years. I do really love Grace, even though you, once again, do have to sit with it, but that looming bass and the drama on this track keeps me hooked. But this is what I've been saying for years. While I didn't like the creative direction of Ultramano and Crawler, there were tracks on there that I really enjoyed. It's not like Idols can't do an artsier, weirder, and more subdued sound. It's all about how you package it. And this track, Grace, here here is exactly how you package it. And I love Joe's performance. It's just the right mix of sultry and super dangerous. It sounds like he's going to pounce at any moment. Hall & Oates is one of the most straightforward, true-to-form idols tracks here. This one's a real punk rager. I really love just hearing the band freak out a little bit. And lyrically, this is one of the most entertaining tracks on the whole album. Plus, it's just really great to hear them get a little off the rails. No, fuck that. This track didn't even start on the rails. Why even bother? Add in some group vocals that are charged up in a rowdy attitude. It is a great track. Jungle is one of the more ruthless tracks here. This track is so off-kilter and off-balance, it doesn't sound comfortable in its own shoes, but it really does uh, work. The riff here is super hard to place, and the drumming just gets super ominous at times. The shaking bells uh, add some nice anxiety to it as well. This track just sounds like it can explode or just light on fire at any moment's notice, and I like that. It's also really epic. I mean, every time this hook rolls around, it's this big, crashing, fist-in-the-air moment, and I absolutely love that. Another truly great deep cut, and I love the continued use of the Save Me From Me lyric. And Gratitude, I really love this track as well, as far as just a production of a track goes. This track sounds so massive. This is one for your workout playlist. I mean, this thing is heavy. It is a thick boy. And, you know, I've said this so far. I mean, you know, this has been a pretty experimental record from Idols. But while this album as a whole isn't them at their wildest, tracks like this are definitely them being their best impression of a pressure cooker. And when it explodes and digs into some post-punk rhythms, it is euphoric. 
Yeah, I'm very much impressed. Even if a handful of tracks on here genuinely, and I do mean genuinely, get out of the great groove that most of this album had me in. This is a fantastic return to form for idols. You know what? Screw that. This is a fantastic new beginning because this is their artsiest and weirdest album to date, and they do so while remaining true to themselves and sounding more timely than ever in a weird way. And yes, sometimes they experiment a little too far, and I get out of my groove, but overall, I am very much back in their good graces, and I think this is an exciting new direction for the band. I'm feeling a very strong 7 on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.